Hello, hello, crossroads witches and other interesting magical beings. I do hope everyone is doing well today. I have a big announcement I'd like to start out with, which is I'm going gray. I don't know how y'all can see, but I've made the decision um, to stop coloring it and to... I'm knocking on 60, y'all. I mean, I turned 59 in February. So I've decided I'm going to all natural. We're going to see in the coming months, I'm actually contemplating cutting all of my hair off. Um, some of the cottage witches are trying to convince me to shave my head, which I'm not quite sure we're going to do that. But it'll be fun in the coming months to watch Miss Taryn, Mama Taryn, slowly go gray. It's time to embrace those crown years. All right, so let's get on to today's topic, which is actually one of my favorite things, and that is my graveyard crystals. I love my graveyard crystals. I have three of them. Uh, they have been in many different graveyards over the years, and when they are here, they are sitting on my altar to the dead. I have a dead altar in the corner uh, that is fed for my ancestral and spirit work. So what is a graveyard crystal? Well, it is a crystal that has been infused with the energies of a graveyard. Crystals, quartz crystals, are wonderful for picking up energies. You can use them for different flavors. This is just one flavor. Another thing you can do is put them in crossroads and then you have a crossroad crystal. If you're looking for a crystal for choices, a crystal to show you a new way, leaving it in a crossroads for a little while works well. And I do want to give a little sneak preview, which is my new book, Conjuring Dirt, The Magic of Footprints, Crossroads, and Graveyards is going to be released in September. I know y'all are like, what did you just say, Taryn? You told us we got nine months. Yeah, you got nine months. This is actually my uh, author copy from the publisher. It's being published with Moon Books imprint, uh, John Hunt Publishing, and the ones they published Who Doing the Psalms for Me, Who Doing the Psalms is an uh, international bestseller. And so I'm hoping they're going to do this one as well. And I'm really looking forward to all of you reading it. So just so you know what's coming down the pipe there, next fall will be a big celebration with the book release. All right. So now we're getting back into graveyards. How, uh, why would I do this? Why, like I said, why would I do this? This helps with communication. Also, um, if you put them on an ancestral or a protector spirit's grave, you can pick up those energies. You take it home. Uh, when I had a chance to go back to North Carolina a while ago over to my mother's grave, I left a couple of crystals um, I just do like a little shallow hole over in the corner or I'll put them up under plants. Don't put them near the, the headstone or dig up under a headstone because you'll cause the headstone to topple. There's always a place to find, put them. I always find a place. I put it under there and I leave it there for a day, two days, a month, and then I come back and get it. That simple. That's what I do. All right, I just leave it there and I let it marinate and all of that wonderful graveyard dead people energy. And then I take it home and I put it on my altar. I use this as a way to amplify spirit communication when I'm really wanting. Um, and it was really amazing was because after I did this with my, my mother's grave and I came home, I was having like th those really cool, vivid, surreal dreams with my mom talking to me. I walked into this room one afternoon and I could smell my mother's perfume. All right. And my mama used to wear uh, Chanel number no. five. And if y'all have ever smelled it, it is very distinctive. I do not wear it. I actually sort of, it's a little too much for me personal. So. <laughs> I don't have a bottle of it around. 
I have nothing that has it on it. And I walked in here and I could smell it. And it was just, and it was just like this hug from my mom. So that was my experience after I put these crystals in my mom, over by mama's grave. They were probably there about three days. I did not pay attention to the moon um, because sometimes life happens and I, those were the three days I was there. So I had to use those days. I have three crystals um, in which I call my graveyard crystals. They're only used for graveyards. They stay over on this side of the room. On this side of the room, I have my uh, uh, living crystals. My, you know, I refer to them sometimes all the time, folks. No, those are dead crystals. Don't touch those. Get to the living crystals. It's how I personally denote. That does not mean that this is the right phraseology. But the ones that are, and actually, I don't really want to touch them over there because I was getting ready to reach out and I'm like, no, no, I got dead in my hand and I don't want to really get up to the living too close right now. All right, and that's how I work. You may have no problem holding both. These are your energies, your rhythms, your magic to create. These are my rules that I created for me and my magic. And they may or may not work for you. Please remember, everything I tell you is one witch's way of doing it. I am never saying this is, you have to, that you have to have three crystals or else it won't work. You know, that's not how it is, which is, it's about finding your magic, sitting inside you and doing what's right. I got a hold of some beautiful raw point crystals. And years ago, on a whim, when I was going to the graveyard, I took them with me and I sat them up on the grave that I was sitting there working and I did my little points out, was talking, and I started to realize that the crystals were starting to vibe. And I'm like, oh, ooh, they're absorbing the energy. And this is how I learned it. I got out and did it. All right. Experience. I went to the graveyard. Part of graveyard magic, part of necromancy is going there. All right. There's no shortcuts. I've had this discussion with folks on, you know, if you could get your little handful, can you buy it? No, I am of the opinion. This is the one thing I'm like, no, no, no. Where I do not agree. I do not think it's right. I think that part of the working is going to the graveyard. If you don't go to the graveyard, you're not getting the benefit of the working. Nobody else can go give offerings to your spirit folk. You need to go give offerings. If you don't have time, if it's not accessible, then that just means it's not the right time for you. When it does become accessible, when you do have time, then it's the right time to go do it. All right. And then if you're getting someone else where they tell you it's graveyard dirt, do you honestly know that's graveyard dirt? And did they do it right? Did they leave good offerings? All right. Or is this just some dirt they scraped up on the other side of the sidewalk and they're just doing some scammy stuff with? Okay. All right. When it comes to magic, when it comes to work in the magic, necromancy magic, you got to do it yourself. It's the experience of, it's sitting in that graveyard and feeling the crystals vibe. Now I could take this crystal and sell it and be like, ooh, graveyard crystal. Y'all don't know if it is or isn't. Y'all weren't there. All right. I know I felt it. I know I wouldn't put them on the grave and spend some time. And I will do that. When I get a graveyard, sometimes I'll just sit them out there like for the hour or so that I'm there and then I pick them up and take them home. Uh, I feel like it's feeding them. It's like they periodically need to go back to the graveyard. I've also put them by the gates of a graveyard where I just want the general energy of the graveyard. I want the protection. I want Mama Bridget, the, the Madame of the Graveyards protection. And that's what I'm after when I'm doing it there. And I have other times I put it over up on the west side of the grave of a uh, graveyard. Because typically over to the west side is where you're going to have the deplorables, despairables, and those that can't get buried in a churchyard. 
and if I'm doing some dark work and I want a cursing crystal, then I take my crystal and I go put it over on the dark side, or I know they got some haha -ha spirit folk that are more than willing to go do some dark things, charge my crystal up, and then I use this as my tag lock and my cursing. All right, did y'all follow me on that? All right, I'm where I'm creating a tag lock and now this is going to be part of the cursing. And when I am doing that, typically these are uh, either part of the cursing where they're buried, put someplace away. I do not reuse them if I have done that to them. Once they're done, I just feel like, oh, I just, I just tainted that up. <laughs> I can't untaint it. Now, when it comes to my graveyard crystals in general, just my good ones where I'm just wanting, like I said, for protection, to amplify spirit communication, to keep my connection to the dead, all right, is why I generally use them and I will take them to different graveyards. I will also periodically, and this is just based on feeling. I can't tell you how other than I pick it up and I'm like, ooh, I got to go put that under a full moon altar and do a good cleansing on it. And I take it out to my full moon altar. I may wash them with water. I may wash them with Florida water. Um, I've poured rum on them. What else have I? Well, I do whatever I feel in the moment needs to be done for them to be cleansed and take them back to a state of neutral and so that I can start all over and reuse them and go back to other graveyards and charge them up again with those energies. All right, which is, of course I wanna hear your comments on graveyard crystals. And what do you think of it? I have done another video a while back where I discussed this as well, all right? Um, I think that it is a great way, like I said, to increase spirit communication if that is what you are de desiring. Okay, I hope this helps y'all. And of course, get out there, fly those brooms, have a bright, blessed day. And as always, amen, bless be, ashe, and a bobo.